Cedar Creek Bottoms Farmstead with another fireside creepy mountain chat. This morning uh, I'm on the home on the way home from work again. Coming another back way. Uh, I'm in a pretty rural area. There's been some sightings from in the past. And even a sighting of a supposedly a dog man. <clears throat> we're going, we're coming down here close to Kalmuga Grist Mill, the place my mother was raised, and four generations of my family has run this grist mill. It was built in the 1860s, survived the Civil War, didn't get burnt down by Union troops when they come into this area. There has been a lot of paranormal associated with this place. A lot of, uh, I guess you call it paranormal investigators have come to this mill and left with some wild stuff. I've experienced some of it. But, uh, but also, there has been some Bigfoot activity here. Like I said, this is a kind of a real rural area. Most of it's uh, farmland and some growing up farmland. Uh, on the other side of the grist mill is the old army ammunition plant property that where they made the gunpowder and uh, heavy water during World War II. The heavy water was for the atomic bombs. Um, this was yeah, I think one time seven, eight thousand acres. Um, I had a, it was run by DuPont. At one time, uh, they said this area had forty thousand people crammed in the Silicaga Childersburg across the river. Uh, my mama grew up in that area. She talked about you know all the people. I mean, people were living in tents. Just having to build apartments everywhere. I mean, it was it was a busy place. Um, I am going to include in this video the small short clip interview from the lady in my neighborhood who's seen the one on all fours that stood up after she called to it and it walked off or ran off. This is not the end of it. Uh, I will be going back because after our little short interview there's more things come to light and she's willing to tell about it I just didn't have enough time to finish it up that day plus there's some more stuff come to light from over there so I've just and there's some other people the people with the chicken that disappeared have found other tracks so I'm wanting to hopefully maybe get them and her uh, together and the other people so so I hadn't forgot about that but I am going to include um, part of that in this video but uh, I'm gonna pull here to Griss Mill where y'all can see it and talk to you just a minute about some of the stuff that's went on here so so there's the Griss Mill and right over here is, I don't know if you can see the covered bridge right down in there. Um, I would go in the park, but uh, they're not open yet, and I don't want to get no hornet's nest stirred up, even though they know me. They knew, you know, they knew my kin folks run this mill. My mother grew up right across the road. She wasn't born right here. She was actually born at another mill called Riser's Mill back seven eight miles through the woods um let's go over the two sightings of bigfoot i know from here um one of them there's a railroad track here i know you can't see it um and i'm gonna come back up here one day and actually walk around this place uh show you all the covered bridge the mill go across the creek because one of the bigfoot sightings was across the creek the other was on this railroad track. It runs right in front of the mill here. 
This is North Fork Southern track. Gets used about once a day. It's not a main track. It's more of a little service track between Chilliversburg and Sotokaga in the little town of Wilsonville, which is across the river. Now, the creek that is right here at the grist mill is Tyladega Creek. It's probably the second biggest creek in Tyladega County. It forms out in the National Forest, in the Tyladega National Forest. Um, comes all the way and empties into the river uh, at the town of Childersburg. Also, the, ta the Tallahassee Creek, which has some sidings and stuff on it, also empties into the Coosa River within a mile of each other. The Tidega Creek and Tallahassee Creek both enter into the Coosa River. And supposedly, well, we know there was an Indian village there. It's supposed to be the Indian village of Coosa, which was one of the biggest, at one time, Indian villages in the southeast. Um, University of Alabama done a lot of digging there um, and everything for you and people still find stuff there all the time uh, but this creek is a big creek uh, at one time it had I don't know how many grist mills on it uh, Reynolds Mill, Waldo, Adams, uh, Allison Mill there's a bunch of mills up and down this creek uh, Calmugga being the last one and it's still probably four miles five to the river and between here and there in the river ain't nothing uh, it's pretty much woods and of course you know where I cross the creek stole army ammunition land which doesn't I don't think the army owns it anymore they've pretty much um, sold most of it off and then gave the city of Chilliversburg and uh, a lot of industry, but most of the industry is over on the other highway. But uh, let's talk about these two little Bigfoot sightings. Um, one, I did get to talk to the witness. This was years ago, 2009. A lot of people come here and fish. Uh, it's good fishing. Uh, the crappie, the uh, stripes run up the creek in the spring up here to the dam and people catch a lot of fish well below the mill down about a mile there's a lot of deep pockets and a lot of good fishing in there well, what a lot of a lot of people do is walk down the railroad a piece because there's a thick spot right down there it's hard to get through so a lot of people walk down the railroad and they'll go past the thick area and then turn and go down there in the creek because it opens up into some big hardwood bottoms in there. In fact, uh, there were some trees on this property that one time were some of the biggest east of the Mississippi River. Um, it, one of them was a sugarberry. There was some type of oak and there was something else. There was like three or four trees here but what happened of course we had a big storm come through plus these trees being very old several of them were hollow inside um, when that big storm come through uh, it laid them on the ground and I think they did save some wood out of some of them and uh, I think got it to a guy to carve stuff you know that you know showing that wood you still go across the creek and find the stumps. They're huge. Um, it's pretty cool. But anyway, going back to the... Just when I get to this place, I kind of get excited. I hate to say that. This is, this is not just history. This is my family's history. So you have to watch me. I'll be off more on history than I will about the Bigfoot. But going back to the Bigfoot... Two guys came up here to fish in the spring. They walked down the railroad past the thick area, and there's a pretty much worn trail. I, I went down there and, and walked all of that uh, to see what they were saying. I have floated down the creek before, but I have never walked down the creek fishing. 
So I went down, found a pretty good worn trail that people were using to get down in that part of the creek. Now, of course, on that part of the creek, it was actually getting on private property. It was getting off the grist mills property onto private property. But I guess the landowners didn't really care about, you know, people fishing. But the two guys, anyway, is they had got off work. They worked here locally. And they, it was in the spring. They wanted to come and see if they could catch, you know, some stripe or crappie coming up you know up the creek here so they come here parked here at the mill used to you could pay a little fee uh used to you could buy a yearly fishing permit from them and uh you know it, it ain't it wasn't much and i think you know they may have been unpaid or they just paid every time it come but anyway they parked here at the mill and they commenced walking down the railroad which is down to the past that spot it's probably a quarter of a mile between a quarter and a half maybe a half a mile down there where the trail starts back off the railroad and you walk back down to the creek they had walked down there they entered the trail walked down the creek and they started fishing this was in the afternoon i think i think they said they got here like at four o'clock and they had planned to fish the dark. Well, they'd been catching fish. Uh, I think they'd caught a few stripes. They'd caught a few crappie. I some, think some brim. And had them pretty good, a little decent, a stranger of fish. And it was getting close to dark. And the fish were still biting, so they didn't really want to leave. So they had planned to fish the dark. Well, they didn't bring a flashlight with them. So, the one guy said, you know, we better quit because, you know, we might step on a snake trying to get back to the railroad and, you know, we might want to get on out of here. And so, they started packing up and they come walking back up the trail. When they got onto the railroad and started back toward the grist mill here, they seen a figure standing in the railroad facing toward them at first they thought it was somebody else then one guy said man that's a big old guy right there and the other fellow said well you you right that is a big old fella well they thought it was just a big person so they hollered out Say, hey, how you, you know, kind of spoke to him. <clears throat> well, he kept standing still and didn't say nothing. And that started making them feel a little uneasy. And, you know, things were running through their head. What both of them was telling me, you know, who is this? What's this guy up to? Why ain't he speaking back? They can't really make him out real good because it's that you know dark you know it's at that time of day where it's hard to make out stuff very very well you know they could tell there's a figure there and they could tell you know there's a big figure well as they get closer this figure turns and walks off into that thick stuff and one guy said that person is seven eight foot tall and the guys the other guy says i think you're right well this really makes them nervous i mean they're still not thinking bigfoot they just you know they're thinking in their head this is a big old guy he ain't speaking back and he just walks down into the thickest part of the area and they're hesitant they're starting to get hesitant about walking on up there but it's getting darker this is where their car is so they, they go talking well we got to get to the car so we, we don't know what this guy's up to but they're still in their brain they're still not thinking of, they're not thinking of bigfoot they're thinking of man he's a you know it's just kind of high step it and you know, 
we'll get on the car, get out of here, you know, and we may get up there and there'll be another vehicle sitting up there or something. Well, they come on down through there and they get to about the spot where the figure was and they hit a smell. The guy, one guy told me, he said, it nauseated me so bad I almost started throwing up. He said it was the god awful. He said it was. He said it was raw sewage, dirty dog, rotten garbage smell. He said it's like it's all combined in one. He said, Mark, I've never smelt nothing like that before in my life. And this guy, you know, he's pretty avid outdoorsman. Hunted, fished, camped. Been here to the grist mill many, many times fishing down there in that same spot. And he said, I never smelt nothing like that. The other guy smelt it and he said, man, he said, it's just raunchy. He said, it'd make your nose burn, your throat, make your eyes start watering. He said, he said, you know, we were coughing and started sneezing. And, and he said, here we are with no pistol, no flashlight. And he said, he told Bo, he said, we got to go, man. Come on. He said, we got to get out of this. He said, I don't know what's going on here. You know, they, their fear was really getting a hold of them. Plus, you know, the smell was pretty much attacking them. They really picked up their step going down the railroad. And they get out of the smell, started kind of getting their composure back. And... Next time I come up here, I'll go down here and show you. But as you get close to the mill, it gets in a straightaway. It's like a curve down there. When you get here to this straightaway, you can see up here toward the mill. Well, they can see the mill. And of course, one of them keeps looking back to see if something maybe is following them or something of that nature. And Look back one time and the figure is in back in the railroad. And he tells his buddy, he says, oh Lord, this thing's back up here again. And he said, well, come on. He said, we ain't messing around. He said, come on. So they get on up here, get to their car. They start throwing their stuff in the car. And his buddy says, I'm gonna throw the headlights down the railroad track. Well, he throws the headlights down the railroad track and can still see the figure. But that's when they know notice there's eye shine off this. Also, they notice this figure is brown looking. So this thing had pretty much followed them all the way up here to the mill. And he said, they're looking at it with the car lights. And he tells his buddy, get out of here. He said, I don't know what that is. I do not know what that is. Well, they leave. Well, they happen to know the people who, at the time, were over the, over the mill property. And they're discussing it on the way home. Of course, they're still shook up. And he tells, he said, well, I'm gonna come back up here and talk to people about the mill, see if they've seen this thing. He said, that wasn't no human. So a few days later, they come back up here, the guy they talked to, is passed away now. He passed away two years ago. And tells him what they saw. And asked him if there'd been anybody talking about stuff like that. And he said, well, come think about it. A few years ago, over on the other side of the creek, they got trails built all in there. And it goes all back in there where you can look at them big trees and uh, goes over to the other creek uh, right next to the old army land and he said well, I had a couple come in here on one Sunday afternoon right not too long from closing but he said, but I told him go ahead and make them a little walk and he said um, um, you know I, I'd wait on so he said they hadn't been gone maybe 15 minutes and he said I seen them coming right back across the bridge you know pretty much almost at a jog and he said, they come down here, and, you know, didn't come toward the store where I was at. He said, they just headed toward their car. And he said, I asked them if everything was all right. 
And the guy looked at him, he said, he said, there's something over there on two legs walking around. He said, it's huge. And said, it turned and looked at us. And he said, all I can tell you is brown looking. And it's about eight foot tall. And he said, uh, we don't want to have nothing to do with this. And just got in his car and left. And that was the end of it. So, I mean, did they both, you know, did they see the same thing these two guys did? Or was it another one? So that's, that's two things that came from this grist mill that I'm, one that I know because I spoke to both witnesses. And then when they spoke to this guy who that I knew because of my family, because at the time, one of my uncles still had some dealings with this grist mill. Well, several of them did. Um, this guy was a truthful fella. So whatever these people saw across the creek, he heard. Now, I never did come up here and talk to him about it. I guess I should have. Um, also, there's a guy that I met. Um... at one of the outings that said that he sent a dog man up here. I was going to try to talk to him further about it. And of course at the outings you have, and I'm, I'm not being ugly about this, but you have people that walk up and interrupt and ask you questions or, and I, you know, so I didn't get to finish with him. And of course he left before I could go talk to him. Now, I've tried to find out who he is several times because I'd like to know a little more about that. So if anybody knows who I'm talking about, that may have seen a dog man at the Kaimugga grist mill, have him get in touch with me where I can talk to him about it. Cause I'd like to hear what he's got to say about it. Now he didn't come back to the next outing cause I know what he looks like. I just don't know his name. I can't remember his name. So, uh, I'd love to talk to him about it and see what he's saying about this. So, um, man, I just like to know. Now, paranormal, I'm not really going to get into that today. Um, but there's a lot of stuff going on right here in this grist mill and that covered bridge. Uh, my grandmother would not let, like, my mama and some of her other sisters come down here at night. My grandpa would sit here and run this grist mill sometimes up to one or two o'clock in the morning, uh, you know, cause he had to get the orders out. And uh, sometimes my uncles and stuff and the older sisters would be down here helping. But mama was pretty little then and uh, some of her other sisters. And, you know, my grandmother would not let them come down here for nothing, so. Um, this is also, I think, the spot where my grandma stuck the sword out uh, the window at something one night. So, um, and hit it, <laughs> whatever it was. So, but, um, so there's a little, there's a lot of history here. There's history of, of course, people, uh, Civil War, um, you know, uh, a lot of Indian history right in this area, which would have been the Creek Indians. Uh, also some Shoney that moved into this area that occupied Sulacaga, actually. One day I'm going to do a history of Sulacaga for y'all and a history of Chillisburg. Chillisburg also is supposed to be the uh, oldest known European inhabited place in America. Now, I know there's a fuss between them in St. Augustine, Florida. Uh, but DeSoto came through here. Uh, when I was doing a lot of the digs, they found a lot of Spanish stuff there. Um, helmets, coins, swords, uh, uh, what all kind of stuff. And, and the thing was said that a Spaniard, one of the Spaniard soldiers got sick. Him and one of his servants stayed here. Uh, and but we do know the soda did make it through this area uh he come down the coosa river from out of georgia 
There's a lot of speculations which coos is which. A lot of people say it's up in Georgia. A lot of people say it's here. Just like the same argument about this being the oldest place where a European lived compared to St. Augustine, Florida. So, you know, and that's not something to debate. I'm debating, but that's one of the claims. Uh, they call Chillsburg the oldest city in America. So, uh, you know, is that claim rightful? I don't know. Uh, but I think both of them are so close together, it's hard to say. Same thing about the Coosa Indian Village. You know, uh, in fact, I think the government uh, way back yonder, you know, tried to figure out which one it was, and they just really could never nail it down. Um, the Coosa Kingdom pretty much started all the way up in Georgia and came all the way down through here and almost you know, went all the way to uh, Wetumpka, Alabama, so which was considered the Coosa Kingdom. So, and there was a lot of villages involved in it between here and there. Uh, part of the Coosa got lost to the Cherokees, the part in, uh, in Georgia, when them and the Creeks had a big war, I think in the 1700s. And the Creeks lost that war um, and had to secede a lot of land to the Cherokee um, north of here, pretty much, uh, pretty much from, from Tide County up, uh, became Cherokee territory, and from pretty much, pretty much I-20 south was Creek territory east of the Coosa River, back into Georgia, so. Um, so a lot of history here on that too, but, uh, that'll be for another topic because I do want to start doing some history, break it up every now and then break the monotony up. Um, anyway, that's two things that I know that went here. And then of course there's a lot of paranormal. We'll get into that one day and then I'll come up here one day and really get into the history and really show you, I'll take a tour of the mill. Maybe get the guy who's the care, you know, one of the caretakers to talk a little bit about it, um, and go from there. Um, like I said, I'm going to include the the interview with the lady. It'll be a short one. She will not be on camera. She didn't want to be on camera, but she was willing to talk, you know, with me pointing out in the yard to where she saw uh, the creature. We'll be going back to talk with her some more, plus the neighbors. Also, I found out there was some activity out in the Tidega National uh, Forest this past weekend. Did speak to that fella. Uh, I really opened up a lot more that I didn't know about, so I'm hoping that here pretty soon that I can get with him, if he's willing and talk about some of the experiences he's had and some of the stuff that's went on. Uh, that's what's amazing is when you get to talking to people, you come to find out some of them ain't just seen something one time. They've seen it multiple times. Um, doesn't mean, you know, a lot of people say, well, when people's had that much going on, there's something going, you know, not necessarily. Uh, I've had a lot of stuff go on. I've had friends that's had a lot of stuff going on. So, you know, we go back to that, you know, once you get see one, are you marked? You know, it's hard to say, but, uh, uh, anyway, I'm gonna start moving the car again. I'll give you a little tour up the road. That's the grist mill. And <clears throat> right down there is my grandfather's Model T and uh, uh, all kind of stuff. But like one day I'm gonna come back. Anyway, we're gonna get on toward Chillsburg and uh, get on toward the house. <clears throat> Let's see, make sure ain't nothing coming. Uh, let's see. But like I told you a little bit about that. Little history of it. 
Uh, Cuyamoga is an Indian name. Uh, if you come down to this part of Alabama, it's a lot of Indian names. Woo! Creeks, towns, communities, uh, you name it. Well, Alabama's an Indian name. Uh, Talladega's an Indian name. Sylacauga's an Indian name. So, um, you know, a lot of Indian names in this part of the country. Most of it's affiliated with the Greek Indians, which was a federation of a bunch of different tribes that came together. Uh, so it kind of formed a federation. Um, now on down here in a few miles, Chilsburg uh, has had their share of Bigfoot sightings right next to the downtown Chilsburg. I will be talking about that in the future. Um, and uh, so that's something that I will go film. Uh, and it kind of coordinates with what's going on over my neighborhood right now. I think it's one of the same things going on. Um, I think the Bigfoot is being opportunist get dog food, cat food, like this one was up here in Chillsburg. Can't prove that, but I think that's what it is after. Um, there's some other things I'm going to hit on down the road. Uh, been really serious, really seriously thinking about coming out and, and saying what my theory really is about what Bigfoot is about what all this other stuff is, UFOs, uh, what the dog man may be, what orbs may be. Of course, it's all theory, I can't prove it. But it lines up with a bunch of stuff that I kind of believe. And what I'm really noticing, there's a lot more people that believe the same way I do and have put a lot more time and research in it and they're coming up with stuff that's I mean it's kind of almost hitting the nail on the head uh, you know so I'm going to do that talk sooner or later uh, I just got to get everything clear in my head uh, that way when I do come out because I know I'm going to have some people probably argue with me about it which is fine. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. You ain't got to argue with me about it. Just tell me you disagree with me about it. And I will have a, you know, adult conversation. Uh, I appreciate So y'all be, that's going to come out soon. I'm going to be in one of those good thinking moods one day and be able to explain it like I want to. I hope you liked the little video of the interview with the lady and what she saw and what happened. Like I said, there's more to it in this video. So there will be more coming out soon, hopefully. Uh, we'll get back over and talk to her and talk to some other people. Uh, but I just want to go ahead and give you a little bit of it. Uh, and we'll, we'll get down in there a little more. Um, Anyway, y'all remember we have our live Friday night, seven o'clock. Come join us. We'll talk about homesteading, farming, Bigfoot, Dogman, paranormal, UFOs, uh, Bible, anything you want to talk about within reason, without stirring up a big hornet's nest. <laughs> it don't take much to stir up a hornet's nest nowadays. And y'all excuse me for being a little hoarse. Uh, But anyway, y'all remember everybody, we support, you know, Spencer Misty Wood Walkers, um, Chris Reinhardt Discover Sasquatch, Kyle with Encrypted Connections, Mr. Martin Nunley, Beast Crew, um, Hellbent Holler, uh, Misty with uh, her family with the Southern Appalachian Sasquatch Speakers. Miss Bama BF got some good stuff. There's a lot of other good people out there. Jonathan Odom uh, with Alabama Big 
Bigfoot Paranormal. Uh, Lauren with Night Callers. And there's a lot of other people with stuff. Y'all go check them out. Uh, also on the homesteading, y'all know some of the people we keep up with, Deep South and Burma Pastures and um, you know, the Holler Homestead. And um, I'll tell you another good one if you ever want to watch. Uh, it's and he does kind of stuff on grist mills, which uh, why I'm interested in his stuff is uh, it's called Matt Calf Mills. He's up there in North Carolina, not far from Perma Pastures. He really does grist mills and all that, and does tells Appalachian stories. And I've been going to hit him up about Bigfoot. Uh, I've emailed him a few times. We've talked back and forth. One of these days, I think I'm going to hit him up about Bigfoot. So, uh, y'all go uh, check that out. And also, uh, Mr. Martin Groves uh, has another interview with the Confessions. Y'all go listen to that. Uh, real, very, very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, it it, it kind of is it, just strange how all of us have different experiences, but some of the same experiences, some of the same stuff. They seen a portal. Friends of mine seen portals. Scott Carpenter seen portals. There's other people seen them. Now, I have not seen them, but I have friends and I was standing within 50, 75 yards of one when it was supposed to open up at night. I've seen the oars. I've seen some big as a basketball, kind of orangish red. And then I've seen the ones that were real right, white looking, and I've seen blue ones. Of course, up on Creepy Mountain, we got the blue man running around. I've never seen him, but three other people have. So, and I knew all three people and were incredible people. So, uh, you know, I've seen UFO, yeah, yeah. I know a lot of people don't want to come out, but I, I've seen some stuff. In that. Being a coon hunter, and that's what I always try to emphasize to people, being a coon hunter. But I, I don't coon hunt anymore. I wish I was. My last good dog, you know, we all know Trouble passed away this past fall. So, the last walker hound I had, uh, debating on whether or not if I'm going to get back into it. But uh, being out sometimes in the woods at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, walking the woods, now that's a lot different being in a cramp, campground, being in a tent or a camper at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning than it is being two miles from your truck way back in a holler. There's some differences, uh, you know. So I've seen some stuff that weird. You know, I just say, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to explain. I, all I know is I've seen something fly by close to treetop level, you know, with no lights. But you can see the outline. Yeah, I've seen it. Uh, me and my cousin of mine sitting back of a truck and one time you know watch something go through the sky with no blinking lights we watched it and you were in downtown Chillifer uh, in fact my great grandfather had a grist mill that was right there uh, he got blew away in a tornado uh, he had a grist mill a farm implement store and a livery stable there. He sold mules and horses. That was uh, my mother's grandfather. Anyway, um, so we were watching this object go through the sky, moving very slow. Next thing we know, this thing just turned and shot straight up like a, I mean, like a rocket. I mean, it left him. So, what was that? I mean, me and my cousin, I'm like, Lord mercy. I mean, it just left there. Uh, we was 15, 16 years old. I 
I mean, I thought it was just a plane. We just couldn't see the lights. But when that thing just done a straight up, I mean, it just went straight up and left. I ain't never seen nothing move that fast. We both just like, whoa, you know. And, uh, and there's been some other weird things I've seen that just didn't make sense to me. All right, y'all, I'm going to get off here. Uh, y'all check us out Friday night. Everybody I mentioned, y'all go check it out and support them. And if y'all know of anybody that I don't know about, oh, one other thing I mentioned. My cousin, John Burton, was on Beef Bigfoot Society this past week. Uh, I can't remember what episode. But it will mention something about Alabama. Uh, Y'all go check that out. Uh, and I, I didn't even know he was on there. I just happened to, uh, you know, scroll in my YouTube and I seen Bigfoot Society pop up. And up under it, I seen man in Alabama has encounters. But also what caught my attention, it said something about a hunter being found by his tree stand torn apart. Well, I said, well, that sounds like Hollins. So, anyway, I listened to it. It ended up being my cousin that has had some experiences. Um, he's been to some of our outings. Um, he's seen one himself uh, in North Carolina, camped out or in a cabin, uh, watched it walk across the porch at night. One of these days, I need to have John on here. I know he wouldn't mind getting on here. Uh, and then he's experienced some stuff out in Tidig National Forest. He does a lot of walking in the woods. Uh, he lived up at Bankhead a while. Uh, and then, you know, and he, he goes into some pretty remote places just walking. So, uh, and get him to tell you a little bit about his... Uh, you know, reenactments, Civil War, and long hunters, and, uh, and and maybe some of his acting in westerns and stuff like that. So he, he's lived a good rounded life. He's uh, uh, he's wrote several books. But y'all go check out Bigfoot Society. I wish I could remember the episode, but look for the one that's talking about Alabama. It was on sometime this week. I want to say it was Tuesday night. No, no, I don't know what Tuesday night because last night was Tuesday night. It's Wednesday morning. So I think he may have been on Monday night. I can't, or Sunday night or something were in there. But Bigfoot Society. Um, but anyway, um, just thought y'all might like to go uh, hear him. It caught me off surprise. But anyway, I'm going to get off here. Y'all love one another. Take care of one another. Get along. If you hear anything going on in my area, let me know. If, um, you know, just let me know. And uh, we'll see you next time. I hope you like this little clip. Give me some comments back on it. So, you know, but give us a subscribe, like, share, comment. Know to hit that notification button. Tell other folks about us. Uh, if you know anybody who wants to come on and talk to me about their sighting, let me know. I'll do that. I told Rebecca I might start doing some, uh, uh, you know, some lives or some phone conversations. You know, let me know. Uh, anyway, and like I said, if y'all know of any other YouTubers that I'm not watching that you know has some good stuff, let me know. Uh, just put it in the comments who to check out. Because I can't keep up with everybody. That's the thing. But I, I you know, but uh, anyway. Well, let me get off here. I've done been on here now probably 40 minutes running my mouth. So y'all have a good day, and we'll see y'all later. This is Mark from City Creek Bottoms. We'll talk to you later. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. I, okay, I come out on the porch to smoke my cigarette. And I looked down through there and I seen a long hair. I thought it was a dog. And I kept calling him. I said, come here, Poochie. I got you a treat. Come here, Poochie. 
And then, uh, uh, I said, no, that's not a dog, that's a bear, long-haired bear. And he was facing the neighbor's yard. Well, I stood up, he looked at me and I said, Jesus Christ, that face. And I got up when I did, he jumped up and took off in the woods. And when he got up, he left on two legs. On two legs. He wasn't gone in a minute. And his color was kind of a Long, dark. and it was uh, a dark brown. A dark brown. And his face was white looking. Yeah, with hair all over it. With hair all over it. And uh, so she doesn't want to be on camera, so in out of respect, we're not going to do that. But I just wanted y'all to be able to see. You see where my finger is. There's a pine cone. And that's kind of where he was, and he was facing this direction, going toward the neighbors. Now, I'm not going to show their house out of respect, but he may have been going after their dog food, but I don't know that for 100%. Um, the next door neighbor says that uh, she leaves dog food out and, and has been missing dog food. So, you know how they are, they're opportunists. So, they may have. Uh, Figured out she was leaving dog food there and been coming helping herself. So, and then the next night, or it was a few nights later, is when you let the dog out to use the restroom. Am I correct? Yep. And it, it run into like a wall, and you smelt a smell. He run over towards the neighbor's yard, which is black. You can't see. Right. Anything. It's real dark. And something. Oh. Uh, awful sound i never heard anything like it it wasn't no human there wasn't no dog it wasn't no bear i don't know what it was but it put off some kind of scent that choked my dog and he uh tried to run he run over there and he gets choked two or three more times then he got all right i don't know what that was it was it was an awful smell it got him it's like it throwed off a scent on him and you smelt it when he come to you yeah and what it smelled like. Terrible. Just, make you sick. Make you sick. Okay. This was, now, when you seen this, how long, what was? It was a week after I seen that down there. It was a week when I seen that okay. over there. And when did you see this? How long has that been ago now? About two weeks? Yeah, about two. Okay. All right. And I hope he don't come back. Well, <laughs> I ain't gonna say he ain't so because uh, they find a place where there's food they gonna hang out till something causes them to move but, but I was gonna give him a treat I thought he was a dog right right and I tried to call him up right. and now how how big you think he was once he stood up on when the he stood up and run he was seven or eight feet tall yeah he took two steps or three, and he was in the woods and gone. Right. Yeah, he went in that hole right yonder, that if y'all can see yeah. it. Yeah, that's where he went. I haven't walked over and looked at that yet, but, uh, um, and this is not far from my house, so, uh, so like I've been telling y'all, uh, pretty sure we got one or one or two or three running around over here in this neck of the woods for some reason, but, uh. But you haven't heard anything else lately or anything? No, because so I'm scared to come out. Well, I wouldn't be too scared to come out. But uh, uh, Now, I'll let you, if you don't mind, but you said your son-in-law seen something also over here? Mm -hmm. well, this was like once during the day. This was during the day. Uh -huh. And He has at night too, but he'll say, don't you see that? It'd be something black. Over here in the edge of the woods. In these woods right here. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. And I don't know if he wants to talk or anything, but okay. he might. Well, I can. We, we'll ask. We'll find yeah. out. I just. Uh, he says you're not supposed to talk him up. Well, some people say that. I mean, you know, it might be him. It might be why they show up around where I live at all the time. <laughs> And where I've lived, these things have showed up yeah, since he says you don't want to look for them and talk them up. Yeah. So it makes them angry. Well, I don't know if it makes, I mean, he could be on something, but also it, I know uh, when I lived on Odin's Mill Road after I started fooding with them, they showed up at my house. When yeah, I'm unusual. Yeah, and then when I moved to Oak Grove up on by the four lane, they came there. And then when me and Rebecca bought this place over here, they. Which they may already been here. That's the thing. I don't know. 
But when we first moved in, we found little bitty feet footprints around the pond. But this was in the winter. I don't know if any kid walking around in the middle of winter barefoot around that pond. So. You know, really, there's no kids in here besides no, that black one there's right. got two. Right. So, That's all. That's it. Okay. Well, I'm going to turn this off a minute. I'll add to this, but like I said, your name won't be brought up where you live. None of that will be brought up. So I always do that.